Hello, Billy Campbell from Blind Spot Gear, and welcome to another episode of Park Bench. It is a beautiful day in Scotland. The sun is shining, and the bluebells have just come out of the ground. So, here's the bench, and here's Old Man Blind Spot. Hello, fancy seeing you here. So, last week we were discussing interviews and how to conduct them and best practices. Got your dog there, yeah. throw a stick. Uh, and this week I thought we'd discuss natural light. Yeah, okay. We are in beautiful sunlight at the moment. We've pulled this uh, nice park bench underneath the sycamore tree. So it's quite a dappled light that's coming through the leaves. There's probably bits of you that are you know, quite hot, other bits in shade, but it's quite a nice mm. contrasty image. So let's discuss all the advantages, some disadvantages of, of working with natural light. What are some of the things to look out for? The first thing is, is to have a look at the sky. Mm. Really, it seems incredibly basic, but you know, every day is different. Um, today we've got pretty much unbroken sunshine. So we've decided to um, sit under here so I'm not in direct sunlight, um, but you've got to be aware of the, the sun's obviously moving the whole time. Uh, Northern hemisphere moves from left to right, southern hemisphere moves from right to left. Mm. Um, so you know you've got to you've got to bet you've got to bear that in mind. Orientate yourself. Have a look at the sky. Is it overcast? Is are there are fast moving clouds? We're going to have to contend with that. Um, do you want your subject in direct sunlight? I mean, uh, in the early days, I would sort of you know set something up with a presenter, and you get a great shot, and then they say, oh, I can't do it. The sun's in my eyes. And you think, well, fucking pull yourself together. <laughs> You're being paid to present, don't <laughs> complain about it. But it, actually, you know, it is pretty off-putting to have really hot sun in your eyes. So I think you've got to work around that and, um, you know, be, be sensitive to, to um, people uh, mm -hmm. and make it, you know, again, we're talking last week about interviews and trying to make people comfortable. And um, yeah, the, the person who's presenting or being interviewed has got to be comfortable and doesn't, again, doesn't matter if, if they look great in direct sunlight and they're squinting and their eyes are watering, um, it's, it's uh, not going to be not going to be any good. Yeah, yeah. And so, what, what kind of time of day are you looking for your optimum? Uh, kind of, if you want to do a beautiful piece of camera. Well, um, ideally, you always get the nicest light in the morning and evening because yeah. you know it's it's war the the the, the, the uh, color temperature is yeah, warmer. The magic hour. Yeah, because the, the sun's actually pushing through more atmosphere, so more blue light's being absorbed. Um, so you get that lovely golden um, color to the sun. Um, and you get much more contrast, you know, in terms of shadows and things. Um, it, so you, much more, you get much more interest in the landscape and it's a, it's a nicer light. Yeah. And as the sun hangs lower on the horizon, you can actually play with that and yeah. put it behind people's heads and you know, exactly. flare through the lens and just move yeah. in and out. It's yeah. very, very beautiful. Because you, uh, when you're doing that, you're very constrained for time because it is it is a magic hour. It's not a magic two hours or three hours. It's, yeah. um, you know... So it's gone into a magic minute. Well, exactly. Okay. So you've got to bear that in mind. There's a plane going over. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, talking about orientating um, yourself to w where the light is, there's a dog back again, wants a stick thrown for him. Um, you know, you get all these fancy apps, and I think you showed me one this morning that actually put in the date, show you exactly the point that the sun rises, yeah. where it sets, where south is. Well, that brings us on to location and location scouting. Exactly. Uh, You've got to know the orientation of, yeah. of your location. And a very easy way of doing that, if you don't have a smart app, is to take your wristwatch and... Um, it has to be analog. has to be analog, yeah. No good having a digital one. And you point the um, small, little hand directly at the sun, and directly between where the little hand's pointing and 12 o'clock on your watch will be due south. And that is that's straight down there, and I know that's right. Amazing, so you know where the sun's going to be going. Yeah, so then you know it's... 20 it's, minutes it, where it's going to it's be. It's dropping, yeah, <laughs> exactly, you can work it out from that. Well, I think that's important because the, the sun app, when I first saw that, I, it just blew my mind. Yeah. Because you could turn up to a location with a director or, you know, location scout, and you can sit, stand there and plan and figure out where you want your camera yeah. to be orientated because you just go on there type in your gps uh, set, uh, switch your gps on fast forward three months yeah or, you know to be honest yeah exactly seven, seven yeah. days or yeah, day, yeah. Or whatever. whatever it is yeah or whatever it is and you just know exactly where the sun's going to be at yeah. one time so if your schedule you're going to be there for 3 p.m yeah you know where the sun's going to be so that, okay we'll orientate yeah. all the action to be here exactly you can, you can work it all out so it's, it's a very precise way of doing it mine's a much more rough and ready way of doing it but um 
That's the old school way of doing it. So. Uh, some, sometimes the old school ways are the best. Exactly. Uh, speaking of which, uh, modifiers and uh, modifying natural light. Yep. So this has these, these techniques have been going for since cameras existed. Of course, yeah. We've got fill, we've got negative, we've got bounce. Yep. So go with what have we got here? So that's the, everybody has one of these. Yep. It's the last to light. So um, you're going to struggle here to find a bit of bit Find of a bit of light, but I can, um, yeah. That's you know giving you a bit of a lift there. We can fiddle around with it. Um, gold on one side, white on the other. So if I can I can show you the gold here on your close up. There we are. Yeah, yeah. bang. Yeah, I mean that's a huge, yeah, huge difference that's doing. And then the white, if you just wanted, because you've got quite deep set eyes. Yeah. There you are. That's just bringing in yeah. that light to the to the eyes. And actually, one of the things that I uh, learned at film school, my old film too, if you bring that newspaper. Yep. My old film, uh, cinematography tutor, Noski, the Ville, uh, she told me a great thing, newspapers, if you want to just bring some light into the eyes uh, outside, you can use this, and that's a bounce. Yep. Yeah. So if I can, even just here, it's, it's easier for me. You'd, obviously, you'd get your actor in there and then, you know, get them to hold it. Yeah. Yep. There. So that, yep. cl that close-up shot of you, yep. you'll be able to see or the, the viewer will be able to see that light. Yeah, mounting. so if you're stuck, yeah, that's a great. Well, it's just great. It, it means you can hold a bounce close into your face yep. um, with a, you know, a prop that's actually envisioned. Yeah. Whereas sometimes a wide shot, you know, doing two cameras, a close up and a wide shot, yeah, yeah. you're not going to be able to get that in. No, exactly. Uh, we've also got you know, polystyrene. Polystyrene, which is very, very cheap. So yeah. At the hardware store. Uh, so what, what do you use this for? Well, it's great. I mean, the, the trouble with the Laster light is that they flop around in the wind and they, and they never actually lie completely flat. Mm. You know, whenever you, whenever you pop them out, they always seem to have a sort of bend in them. So I find them quite difficult to control sometimes. But a bit of polystyrene like that is just um, dead flat. Mm. And it's, um, what I can see there, it's, it's, it's bouncing, bouncing light onto you. Yeah, you're covering the shot there. Covering the shot, but anyway, <laughs> there it is. Right, it's easier to see it on you because you're, you're closer. Yeah. Again, yeah, that's, I don't think I'm covering the shot there, hopefully no. not. Yeah, there, it's perfect. Yeah. So that's on and off. off. But this is good. Noisy, and it blows around in the wind. It is extremely noisy. Yeah. You can you can hear that on the mic. Uh, but if we, this is this the is, one you discovered. This is brilliant. I found this on the skip. So, what it is, it's um, um, lining that goes underneath a floor. Right. So, I, you know, it's, it's just a, 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 a layer that goes underneath. Um, An insulation or? Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's brilliant because you can bend it so you can actually, um, you can focus the light in a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can do anything you want with it, really. And of course, it's black on the other side. That's what I like about it. It's yeah. negative film. Yeah, so you've got so negative. you've got your black here. Yeah. So if you want to take, oh God, it's really hard to take away. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's, that's working. Yeah. That's taking away uh, direct a bit more towards the camera so if you wanted to bring back I don't know if that's gonna be in shot it probably is mm -hmm. uh, the choice of uh, working with uh, two cameras and not being able to see the monitor of any of them but uh, yeah so that does that and it's also a very noiseless yeah uh, way and also it doesn't get destroyed no polystyrene is a real bugger because you put it in the back of the car yeah and then by the end of the shoot one sheet's always wrecked. Yeah, exactly. Unless you've got a dog, that, which mm, the dogs like, do like, chew, like they like chewing them up. They do chew through them. Yeah. Uh, so these are things to bounce light uh, to control it. Yeah. And manipulate it. Yeah. Then obviously, if you're out filming in hard sunlight, yeah. And you want it to come through a bit more diffuse, what can you do for that? Uh, we've got there's a diffuser uh, in the last light which you can take out, um, so you can use that as a, as a to, to diffuse the light. Yeah, so there's a, there's butterfly nets you can you can use. So you can see the light kind of shining through that. So so you can. Well, hang on. Let me come round. Okay. And, uh, so that's that's the dappled effect there. But if you wanted to just to kill that, uh, it gives a much more diffused light. And that should be that's off your yeah. uh, sleeve as well. So that's just taking out all that hard light, which makes it much more consistent. Um, that probably makes the background pop a bit more as well. Yeah. More uh, contrast. 
I was going to be so off mic there for that. I don't worry. Push it in post. Yeah. Push it in post. So talking about backgrounds as well, we should mention the uh, ND filter as well we're using because we're, we're shooting on, um, if you're shooting on S-Log2 now, yep. often you can't get below 2000 um, ISO. I think it's 3.2 or is it 2000? Is it 3.2 or 2000 yeah. anyway? But the point is you often, you can't, um, you can't actually stop down enough yep. um, on the lens. Mm -hmm. You know, you actually physically can't. You F16. You still can't. You still need. Still too to, much. Yeah. Um, so we're. I think it's a rarity we're, in Scotland that, that happens. It is a rarity, but it does happen sometimes. So also, if you want to come down at f4 or you know 2.8 to get yeah. that depth of field. If you want to throw the background out of focus a bit more. You um, put the ND on. Yeah. So we've got. I think we've got a 0.9 on here. Yeah. 0.9 on that at the moment. Um, and then we've got the GoPro here, so no yeah. NDs for that. No, no. It's just a uh, hope for the best. Yeah. Just point and shoot. No. Yeah. It seems to work pretty well. No, it does. Um, do you want to talk about a little exterior lighting? Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, uh, this is the tile light which we manufacture. So this is, it's, it's not, but you can actually work as a little bounce. Uh, so even in this hard daylight, uh, that's a setting one, two, three, four, five. So that's. I can definitely feel that. Oh, yeah, I can see mm. that. You can see it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, if you've got, you know, you've got two eyes, so you can yeah. just lift up there. Um, if you wanted to accentuate even more of the shadows, mm -hmm. there we are. That's really um, bringing in the hard shadows. Very, uh, what, what was it, old oh, Chapman? Was it Chapman? No, no, Gordon Willis. Gordon Willis mm. on the um, Godfather. Godfather. Yeah, so that's a, a simple, small fixture. Yeah. That is battery powered. That you can just bring out with you, and you know. If yeah. you're, Notice here you're a bit contrasty. Yeah. So or you want to, or you just want to give a bit of a lift to somebody outside. It's a dull day. You just want to make them pop out a bit more. You know, if you're working with a presenter or an actor. Yeah. Um, and you want to just, just, yeah, just give them a little bit of a lift. But, you know, not too much, but mm -hmm. make them stand out a bit. Okay, great. Well, I think uh, that's a nice little discussion on the park bench. Okay. Uh, See you next time. Yeah. What are we going to discuss next time? Don't know. Until next week. I'll say goodbye to this camera. I'll say goodbye to this camera. All right. Bye. See you later.